See, I didn't want my son to come in here and hear this hard lesson, the truth right now, because I've been lying to him like the rest of y'all have. <laughs> y'all got to quit telling these kids that they coming from these loving situations. That's why they coming up feeling like they so fucking entitled. Y'all got to start telling these kids the truth. Some of you niggas is $40 babies. Some of you niggas is light bill babies. Some of you niggas only here because your mama liked your daddy's car. I mean, but that's, that's neither here nor there. The thing about it is we make the best of it. I be trying to tell my son, man, I wouldn't, you know, I wasn't trying to do this, man. It ain't no handbook to fatherhood, so pardon me if I make mistakes, son. I wasn't trying to do this. If it wasn't for the fact that your mom was making meatloaf that night, nigga, you wouldn't even be alive. But we make the best of it. See them kids, man? If you ain't got no kids, hear me out. Think about it. Kids come out and change the trajectory of your whole life. I know he before I had him, I was out here living, nigga. I'm out here on. Before I had kids, motherfucking t-shirts fit good. I had a six-pack. I'm driving the cutlass and shit. I'm selling dope, nigga. Hairline came down to his eyebrows. Real nigga out here. Then all of a sudden, December 4th, 2006, God decided he want to bless me. I mean, I'm serious. I'm looking at this nigga. I'm holding this beautiful baby in my arms. And I look at God. I look at the baby. And I look at, this, look at this nigga. And I look up at God. And I say, God, he was beautiful. He was like seven pounds, 19 ounces. Beautiful, fat little baby. I say, God, ooh. You could have kept the seven pounds, gave me the 19 ounces. I'd have went out of town. <laughs> you know the nigga could have deal with 19 ounces in 06. Nigga, I'd have been the man and said, I got my colors back. <laughs> Young bitch gonna text me at two in the morning. You know when they text you at two in the morning, you know what that means. You better get that shit. She go to, well, she called me at two in the morning talking about Slink. I'm getting excited. I'm getting ready. She says, Slink, I'm putting my clothes on. Thank you. It's go time. She says, Slink, I want you to come over. By the time she said that, Ken, I was already in the car. I'm like, oh, okay, baby, what, what's up, what's up? I'm on my way, what's the address? She said, no, I want you to come tomorrow and barbecue. Could you bring your sandals, bitch? Oh, man, like, I'm gonna be honest. We got a, the actor, producer, comedian, but let's keep it 300. We got Black Jesus in the building. <laughs> Slink Johnson, you know what I'm saying? We know you from LA. I mean, I, I know you from LA. I mean, I play GTA 5 all the time, you feel me? So I, I hear the voice. But like, how's your process in growing up? Because I know like you weren't born here, but you were raised here. I was born in a little small town called Dumas, Arkansas, in the sticks, in the mud, in the country, man, in the country. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was born there and I lived there until I was about 10 years old. My mother remarried and relocated us to uh, Inglewood, California, and I grew up between Inglewood and South LA. Inglewood. Yeah. Up to no good. Uh, so being from Arkansas, like, because I was recently there, I seen cotton. So you seen cotton as a kid? <laughs> yes. How was that experience? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I want to say that I didn't, I saw it. I didn't, I, 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 I have friends my age who still pick cotton and you know these people still pick cotton there and um yeah. i never got to do that but um shit like i say it was a fucking plan i left <laughs> i was 10 years old man it was, it was cotton shit it was a plan all right so like when did you start becoming a comedian oh man probably uh i think my 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 my, my humor started um coming out around 12 13 years old Okay. That's when I started being 
uh, uh, you know, a class clown. Now, you know, I went from a shy kid to a class clown. I ran around, around time junior high school. You get the class clown uh, award? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> real dickhead. Yeah. It was a real dickhead at school. When you decided to go pro, we gonna go to going pro. Athletes on here. Yo. <laughs> uh, being from the city, was it like, did you feel like you had to go out and do comedy spots where nobody would see you? Were you scared mm. to like fail locally? My, my, I'm gonna be honest with you, dog. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go pro like with thoughts of like, yo, I'm I'm about to be a comedian. It kind of fell in my lap, bro. It just kind of happened for me. Like again, hip hop was my first love, my first foray in the, in the entertainment. You know, I was signing too short as a rapper, and you know, I was really doing my That's shit, and I just thought I was just, I just, you know, I thought by now I'd be a retired rapper. You know, if it was Jay Z <laughs> somewhere, but you know, it didn't quite didn't quite materialize for me in, in the timeline that I wanted it to, and I never say it's over. Can't never say it's over, I'm still alive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, shout out to Smokey Horse Crew, they all rapping. Low D's, no, D's it's D's over, my nigga, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you better not, it's over. <laughs> I might do me one hit Not song. another 40 year old right, nigga, it's over, nigga. <laughs> I might do me. I might do me one hit. <laughs> <laughs> got, you, know what I'm you know that Man, shit. Go on and battle Devin the dude and get this. <laughs> <laughs> get this away. Smoke That's a, nah. You you know you know what though for real though, man. Um. Uh, you know, I'm about to jump back in this hip hop game, man. You know, okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. you know, I got some shit to get off my chest. You know, everybody, yeah. everybody airing their beef out. I just felt like I, I got to air my beef out too, man. Yeah, you know, man. Talk about it. Let's talk I don't like saying niggas' names, homie. <laughs> I don't like saying niggas' names, but I'm beefing with that nigga Kwame, man. Ooh. Ooh. Polka dots. I don't know why. Things. Kwame, if you see this, man, I don't know why. Just go with it, though, my nigga. But I'm <laughs> <laughs> just let it run. I'm with, I just got to have beef with somebody. I'm beefing with Kwame and Silk the Shocker right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm beefing. Sit the shocker, nigga. Come on, let's get these bars, nigga. Kwame, nigga, you win it. Nigga, tired of these niggas, man. I'm tired of these niggas. Sit the shocker took my spot, man. And he was fucking with Maya when she. she Whoa, Maya. Maya, what? What's you said Maya ass. That's me and Maya. Yeah, I was like, who Maya? He's talking about Maya, Maya, Maya. Maya, 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 Maya. doing a song with Maya, and I was kind of hurt, like, because Maya, really, she my secret. Crush. Maya still look good too. Maya, Maya still look, look good, good, man. Shout out Maya. Maya. Definitely. I don't know what she doing. <laughs> you, you play some really unforgettable characters. I mean, I talk about Lamar and Grand Theft Auto, but we also talk about Black Jesus. Like, how did these uh, situations come about for you? Oh man, God and timing. You know, I, I met my uh, a friend of mine, Jason Van Veen, uh, and. 93 and he was a young filmmaker at the time he took a liking to my personality and, and we became friends and i started doing you know student films and, and sketches and stuff with him on film he even went on to end up writing writing for and working with aaron magruder mm. and through through that i met aaron and through meeting aaron i met dj pool and through dj pool came gta5 and through Aaron right. came uh, Black Jesus. So all that stuff is kind of all in there together. And to be honest with you, dog, it's like, honestly, people be going out for for uh, uh, auditions and roles. And I respect to the people who really been, you know, working on this as a craft, working on this craft, you know, all their lives. You know, I'm just, I just feel real blessed, man, and thankful mm -hmm. that this, this stuff kind of fell in my lap. Again, I'm looking at rap. Yeah. I'm looking at hip hop, man. I don't want to rap, nigga, and then yeah. fuck around. God give me a, a, a TV show in which I'm the lead. So it was definitely a blessing, man. And, but shout out to the people who been chasing that kind of stuff all their life, man. And much respect to them. But for me, that shit just kind of happened for me. And and with that, I'm trying to parlay it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I really wish I had been more prepared before it happened. But, you know, things happen. And, you know, now niggas just try to parlay and do all that little mm -hmm. shit. I'm I'm changing breaks. I'm baking cakes, babysitting. I got a I got a battered baby daddy self defense class that I do at the Slauson Swap meeting. <laughs> I'm trying to get all that shit in, man.